Hello and welcome to the Student Hub Live. Well, isn't this festive? This is our Christmas special. I'm Karen Foley and I'll be hosting this two hour special session that we're delivering today um, with a view to sort of allowing you to celebrate a bit of this festivity around this time of year and think about some things that OU students may be struggling with, like time management and getting those TMAs done over Christmas and all sorts of things. So we've got a really great session for you. Now, the Student Hub Live is a live interactive online event and you'll see some widgets which are interactive voting tools that will be appearing on your screen. And we'd like to know where you are, whether you've been to a Student Hub Live event before, which faculty you're studying with and how you're feeling right now. Now you'll get used to these widgets which will be appearing in each of the sessions as we run the programme today. And uh, it's a really nice way for you to check in and let us know what you're doing and we tailor the content accordingly to, to suit you. So if, for example, you'd like to select one of the multi-choice questions or pinpoint on the map where you are or fill in one of our word clouds, there are three options on the word clouds by the way and uh, if you can't think of three that's fine, just put a full stop at the end of one um, and submit those to send them. But it's a really, really good way way to let us know how you're feeling and check in. So please do complete those now. It's really useful um, to get a steer about where you're at, but that's not the only way that you can interact with us. There's a watch and engage option on the website and hopefully most of you are in that and there you can chat. Now HJ and Sophie are behind the chat desk and Evan is backstage as well as are some of the other team to talk along with you, answer any questions. So do give us a shout out if you, um, if you have any questions that they can help with and they'll be feeding all of that chat and dialogue back into the studio with our live panel. If you aren't in the Watch and Engage, do do that because it's a much nicer experience and you can also use those widgets there too. So if you aren't an OU student or you aren't in Watch and Engage, go back to this website studenthublive.kmi.open.ac.uk, click on the Watch and Engage option and then you can come back in and you put your UKU, your normal student or staff login details in there um, and then you can... Uh, watch and engage with us and if you aren't a current student because everyone is welcome you can create an account which is quick and easy to do. There's also a frequently asked questions section on the website if you are stuck and I hope that you found the how to use the interface guide useful as well that we've just played before the session but people will come and drop in and out during this and that's absolutely fine. There's also a catch-up service available if you can't stay for the full two hours with us. Um, so just feel free to drop in and out as much as you want to but most importantly interact and let us know how you're doing. We've also got social media so we've got a Twitter account which is being manned, which the hashtag is studenthublive16. And we've got an email which is also being manned and that's at studenthublive. Now I'd like to introduce our hot desk, Sophie and HJ. What a lovely festive array you have there. How are you both? Hi, very good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. You're looking absolutely fabulous in your Christmas jumpers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's my first time this year. I've been excited. <laughs> I've saved my first Christmas jumper day of the year for today, so... I think it's I think it's apt. <laughs> yes, okay. it's the right time of the year. It's not too early. Definitely, so, definitely. Yes. I mean, yours is slightly better than mine. I think you need to. I wouldn't say that. But I, I do. You know, I've got I this one. You have a trick up this, your sleeve. I have a trick up my sleeve <laughs> with this one. I'm very excited about it. So, I I've I <laughs> this is probably my favourite. There's no of way all I'm time. ever going to be. Not even Olaf <laughs> can beat that. <laughs> but. Um, Yes, yeah, so loads of people chatting and I'm really excited to talk to everyone. If you've got a fancy Christmas jumper that you want to send us in or uh, a picture of your Christmas tree or... Study, festive I've, study buddies. Festive They've study buddies. They've already come in. I do like oh, a festive study brilliant. buddy. Study buddy in a hat. Can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always like to send things out to people, don't we? Oh, so yes. what have you lined up for? today to post back through your lovely mailbox when people send us in these selfies. Well we've taken on the time management um, and the new year so we have um, a time planner here, a Student Hub Live one, um, it's got some Student Hub Live dates in there so any study, any um, selfies that you send through please email them to us it's studenthub at open, dot, at open dot ac, dot uk, um, or tweet them to us um, either way and we will get those out to you. Lovely. Well, thank you very much. And it's great to see um, some new students here. Um, a lot of you are doing science and um, a lot of you are doing level one. And I'm going to tell you what you have in store over the next two hours. So firstly, um, I have Matthijs Lukesen from um, the Department of Health and Social Care. Um, and he is going to be talking about mental health, which is a really common issue at this time of year. And we're going to think about things that we can do to make ourselves feel better and make other people feel better as well, hopefully, over the festive period and these dark 
winter months. Um, then we have Stephanie Sinclair. She's going to be talking about time management. Again, a really, really topical theme. Um, Christmas is often a time when I think, oh, I've got two weeks off. There's loads I can get done. And then I come to the end of it and my to-do list isn't looking much happier. Um, so we thought about how we can actually factor that in because a lot of you will have TMAs that are looming in the new year. So Christmas can be a really good time to catch up and get up to speed with things. Um, but also we can sometimes notice, uh, in particular if you're at level one, that sometimes TMA three can be a little bit harder if you're on a 60 point module um, than maybe TMAs one and two. So Matt Staples, the chair of DD102, Introduction to the Social Sciences, is going to come and talk to us about how to actually tackle some of those things. And also very importantly, how you can get support over the festive period. And then it wouldn't be Christmas without a discussion of religious festivals and the role that they play in society. And so Paul Francois Tremlett will join me um, and we'll be talking about all of those things also. So we've got a really lovely programme, but let's see how you're feeling because we asked you to fill in our Wordle, um, in which there are three choices. You can still fill that in as you're going along, but let's see how everyone's doing right now. So we've got some lovely things coming up. Christmassy, motivated, busy, 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 Christmas, TMA results, cake, sparkly R, pensive deadlines, calm, glad Student Hub Live is back. That's wonderful. Um, be interesting to see how many of you have been to an event before. So if you haven't um, filled that data in on the widgets, do let us know whether you've come to an event um, before or not. Now, before we crack on with this fabulous programme, I have some news, okay? So I'd like to talk about two things first. The first is the NSS, the National Student Survey, which is starting in January. Now, this is something that um, over 25,000, yes, 25,000 OU students are contacted to take part in this. So it's not something that everyone can do, you're actually contacted, and it's run by a market research company, um, Ipsos Mori, and they basically contact you via email and say, would you like to take part in this? Have either of you two done this when you were students? Yes, I've done I, one. I've done one as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I did mine last year. So oh, okay. One. I did mine a bit before that, I think. It was in the <laughs> middle of my studies. So what was it like then? What, what happened? Uh, I got sent an email link saying that I'd been one of the chosen to do the um, student survey. And um, the survey just asks a bunch of questions like, uh, how happy are you with teaching, uh, support, the students' union? And it could ask things whether you're um, happy on different scales or there's some boxes where you can leave some comments as well. And yeah, it's a bit varied. It doesn't take too long either, which is a good say, thing. You, you, it does, you look at it and you think, oh gosh, it's gonna be really long but actually because you you get into it it asks you the right questions and you can give some comments and some feedback um and then it's sort of done within sort of 10 minutes so yeah brilliant excellent well if you get contacted to do it please do take the time to fill that in it's also really interesting when you're studying um social sciences and often doing your own research projects to to see what it's like participating in someone else's research as well i often find that quite interesting but um the nss is really important to us as a university and they help us understand what we're doing and in fact like events like the student hub life have come directly from some of that feedback where students said that they wanted more opportunities to um, explore their interests with other students academics so please do fill that in your feedback really is heard and, and be be honest you know if there are ideas about ways in which we can improve things we really really do want to know um, so as I've said before those come to you on an email and they're through the market research company Ipsos Mori so um, please do take part in that if you're asked to now, another thing that you can do is uh, fill in an award if you think one of your tutors has been outstanding. So the Open University Students Association are inviting nominations for the outstanding tutor. Um, and this is part of the OU's teaching awards. So every year we run these teaching awards. Um, and this one um, is a chance for students to nominate somebody who they think has been particularly supportive and encouraging in their studies. Um, tutors really are important, aren't they, Sophie and HJ? And um, we're going to be talking to Matt Staples about the important role of the tutor. But sometimes they can seem a little bit removed, both you know physically, I guess, and emotionally. Have you had a tutor that's, um, that's done something particularly wonderful that you might nominate? Um. Yes, um, probably just putting up with me as a student <laughs> would be, someone would be in, the li in line for an award for that. But um, one of my tutors was really brilliant and um, I went to one of his tutorials, which was a little bit away from me, and uh, I knew he was travelling on uh, the train back to Cardiff. So I said, oh, do you mind if I join you and uh, perhaps you could uh, talk through some of my TMAs with me? 
see see what I could do overall to improve perhaps some tips and um, he did so uh, <laughs> I sat on the train with him on the way back to Cardiff and uh, he kindly went through my TMAs and uh, we actually went for lunch after so that was lovely private cheat tool yes <laughs> brilliant so uh, that yes he was absolutely brilliant tutor and his advice yeah. uh, really helped me uh, get the score I got over there all in that module so I was very happy with that yes Excellent. Yes, I, I had a tutor actually. I used to have to handwrite mine, although I was with the AU because I was I did maths or I'm doing maths. Um, so instead of scanning them in, I, she actually lived sort of in between where I live now and where my dad lives. So I would drop them off on the way <laughs> um, so I can make sure they were delivered rather than put them in the post. And that really helped actually just secure the peace of mind that she had it in her hand before the deadline. And there was no postal errors or delays. So that was really nice. Wonderful. Well, if you have a tutor who you think has gone that extra mile above and beyond your expectations, then you can write only 300 words um, to sum up why your tutor's special and how they've gone the extra mile to help you. So do you feel they've demonstrated excellence in teaching? What's special about maybe the way that your tutor supports you? Um, and also the impact of, of that behaviour on your work. So if you think you'd like to nominate your tutor for that, then Send an email with outstanding tutor to usa at open.ac.uk. We'll put that link in the resources page of the website and we will also put it in the chat box. Um, now, that is due by the 10th of January, so that could go on your Christmas to do list if you feel like uh, nominating somebody for that. And those are all going to be um, presented at the OU's birthday, which is Charter Day, um, which is in April. So we look forward to hearing you from that. Right, that's all the news. I'm going to welcome our first guest, Mateus. Welcome to the studio. And I'm delighted to see you bought a big sack of presents. I did. I did. I've got, I've got a special Santa sack. Because we're going to be talking about giving, aren't we, as part of mental health. So I yeah. think that's really, really lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Excellent. So you have been challenged with the task of, of, in a very short time, thinking about ways that we can have a positive impact on our mental health around this time of year. Now, by mental health, we don't necessarily mean mental health problems, do we? But mental health is something that, that we all have and that, that can fluctuate and vary depending on how we're feeling and what we're doing, as well as maybe whether there are mental health problems. We also know that a lot of students will study with the Open University and um, possibly because they may have mental health problems. And indeed, a lot of our students do have various disabilities, some of which are mental and some of which are physical, that can have a, a real impact on their studies. But this session in particular is about irrespective of whether there is a, a marked mental health um, disorder or, or issue um, or not. We wanted to think about five ways that we could encourage good well-being over this festive period. And you've given us um, some ideas and you've wrapped them up in presents, haven't you? I have, I have. And I guess I just wanted to, uh, sort of on the back of what you were saying about everyone having, everyone has mental health. You know, we all, like we have our physical health, we all have our mental health and, and that fluctuates um, over time. And I think Christmas uh, can be such an exciting, wonderful, magical time of year for so many people, but it's also an extremely difficult time of year for others. So I guess we get sort of bombarded with those images of the perfect family or, um, you know, um, the sort of right way that Christmas should be done. And that can be quite tricky for a lot of people because they don't have that sort of family experience. And also, I guess, just before I launch into those big, and what's in the gift bag is um, it's also really hard for those people that have, have had a bereavement. So uh, especially if it's a recent bereavement, because Christmas will be the first time that, that someone is missing from the from the gathering. So I think those things mean um, that well, those, those can be real challenges to mental well-being over the festive period. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one of the times of year that I think, you know, it tends to have higher suicide rates, higher levels of depression. There can be a lot of loneliness and isolation. And as you say, you know, we have these constructs. We have these ideas about what perfect Christmas looks like. There's social media. Everyone's putting their trees up. There's a lot of pressure right now. Mm. And it can be hard if for whatever reason you don't feel like, you know, colluding with that idea of the norm and being happy because a lot of people can really struggle with the winter. It's hard to get out and do things. It's hard to meet people. It, it can be physically very isolating as well as you know mentally being isolating we've got some widgets on our screen as well so um, we'd like to know what three things you're most looking forward to giving this season um, we'd also like to know what you find most challenging about this time of year and we've got a multi-choice question there so you can think about um, which aspects you find particularly difficult also there's a scale so where on that scale do you feel in terms of how connected you feel to people you care about and also how in tune you feel with your immediate environment right now so if you can feed those into us we'll be in Incorporating those in some of the discussion that Matthias and I will have. 
So, what's the first thing you'd like to talk about? Well, I, I couldn't resist. I already had to like grab one Get of the, the gifts out, out, you know. Yeah. Um, but the, these sort of five ways that, that I'd come up with, I want to sort of acknowledge that I got those from the Mental Health Foundation in New Zealand, um, and they'd come up with this um, way of thinking about wellness and how we can support our own wellness. And then I just, w when we were talking about it earlier, thinking about how we apply that to Christmas. Yeah. And the first one I've got is, is about taking notice. And um, that, I guess, is about being mindful and aware of, of what's happening. Um, and for me, one of those things that really sort of stands out, you know, after maybe the 10th game of charades where I'm sort of bombing at that and not doing especially well, getting a little bit frustrated, <laughs> failing at it and thinking, OK, I've had enough of the charades. I then sort of try and think about like noticing certain things. And one of the things that always sort of melts my heart is seeing my father-in-law and how much he enjoys the family gathering and everyone being together. And I think it's his sort of happy place. So um, even though I'm really rubbish at the charades um, and they can be a bit of a struggle, I sort of try and notice that because I think that's really quite a helpful thing to draw my attention to. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's um, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I think um, there's so many, you know, there's so much commercialism. Uh, there's so much, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things going on. People feel pressures to eat. I mean, I know everyone's chatting a lot about food. And can I just um, thank our team here for this wonderful spread that we're going to tuck into later. Um, but, but there is so much going on that, that, that can be difficult. And I guess what you're saying is appreciating those those things that are meaningful to other people and trying to take happiness from, from some of those things. Also being mindful, I mean, being physically, present in your body that's really important in relation I guess to this idea that we're also going to talk about about being active being mindful about your physical environment is, is important but why is it more of a challenge at this time of year than others do you think is it the winter do you think it's because there's so much going on that's more mental and more spiritual or, or emotional it, it, you know, people can lose touch, I guess, of, of how connected they feel. Yeah, well, the physical one is, it is tricky because you're not so motivated, I guess, to go outside when it's really cold. Um, and so the weather is, it does play a part in that. So if it's two degrees outside and it's heaving with rain, then you're sort of thinking, mm, I probably won't do that. And the other, I think, is a lot of times people are in different environments. So they're not in their usual home environment. So they might not have the same sort of access to the gym. Um, they might not necessarily sort of, um, they feel like part of the routine of Christmas is quite different to their regular routine. So they probably feel like they can't just go on a run um, spontaneously like they would if there weren't the sort of family commitments that, um, that people can feel sort of quite in some ways locked into. Um, and then I think it is sort of the temptations to sort of stay warm inside and eat you know, nice food. Yes, as we yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also, I mean, I think when you start being mindful and, and noticing some of these things, winter has a one, I mean, it's nearly the solstice, which I always think, yes, thank goodness that's over. From now on, every day we'll get a little bit lighter. Yeah. Trying to notice those times and, and also the Christmas of the air. And, you know, there's still, um, there's still a few autumn leaves around because I haven't swept some of them up. But, you know, there's still, there's a lot changing in the weather and there's a lot to notice isn't there that that's special about this time of year yeah and I think it's sort of it's interesting coming sort of from an Australasian background it has a completely different sort of focus I think a northern Christmas versus a southern hemisphere Christmas so like if I compare and contrast them to how they are in Australia and New Zealand yeah. um, it's different because there it's the summer holidays whereas here it is very much around the summer sol I mean the winter solstice yeah, yeah, yeah. I should say um, and these sort of rituals that we have um, associated with the cold time of the, of the year. Yeah, Sophie's obsessed with it snowing. She won't stop going. In fact, this whole Christmas thing has been your idea, hasn't it? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I spent a lot of time I, doing the decorations and uh, yeah, I, I, I do enjoy Christmas. <laughs> so what are people saying? Because you've got on your social media board, we've got some ideas and we want to try and pull some of the ways that people are relating to some of these things. What's apart from food, which I do appreciate as a very you know sensible topic, what what else is going on in terms of some of the things that people are talking about in relation to Matosa's ideas? So we've had quite a few, a lot of people coming back actually about um, the tutors and how their tutors have been very helpful. Um, and Helen's mentioned um, the student advisors, and I think it's very important that people feel they can contact not just their tutors but the student support teams. There are loads of different um, people, that, you know, USA for example. There are loads of forums and groups that the OU, you know, um, give you access to. And I think it's helpful for people at this time of year specifically to feel included. Um, so I definitely like the idea of talking to as many people as possible, student support teams, all sorts. Um, so that was Helen. So anything else? Um, I'm getting a bit 
distracted with people talking about snow and food. So. <laughs> and I mean, uh, this is who. this is what uh, we we did talk about New Year's resolution <laughs> resolution. So perhaps mine should be uh, more focused. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we did get a Doctor Who uh, Christmas decoration sent in as well, so I don't think that's really helped you. <laughs> no. I'm surprised, I'm surprised no one's talking about Star Wars yet, to be completely <laughs> honest, with our lovely starry screen and oh, the so eminent release. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and Paul uh, Francois Tremlett, uh, for those of you who've watched previous Student Hub Lives before, and if you haven't, you might want to watch that. He, he's done sessions on, is Star Wars uh, a new religion? So, uh, so that's quite a hot topic for him, and I imagine he'll want to be talking about Star Wars later as well, just to throw a spanner in the works. But um, we've asked you to feedback on our widgets, and one of the things that you've said you're really struggling with um, about being most active this time of year is feeling motivated. So about half of you are struggling with that side of things. Maybe that's why there's some focus on um, uh, making New Year's resolutions, etc. But it can be difficult, can't it, Mateus, to feel motivated? Oh, definitely, yeah. Mm. And I think the thing is that we we sort of want to balance the sort of activity with some relaxation as well. So yeah. it's a sort of, I think, um, with the pressures of the festive season as well as the pressures of study um, and all the other commitments, it can, yeah, you can just feel overwhelmed. Because they're saying time is the next best problem. So it's, it's that balance, isn't it? What to do with the limited time that you've got. OK, so what, what's the next of the ideas that we're going to focus on now? Well, the next is about gifts and giving. Yeah. Um, and I think this is a real pressure point for many people because you mentioned earlier about um, um, social media. And one of the things I guess that people cite is, you know, people have pictures on social media of sort of stacked metres high, these gifts, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of people don't have the, the money to be buying these all these gifts. Um, and I think what the thing is to focus on in terms of wellness is, is how we can give in, in many different ways. So it's not just about financially giving and, and getting the, the most expensive gift, but um, like when HJ was talking about and Sophie were talking about tutors, one of the things that people can give is actually kind words mm -hmm. um, and deeds. So it's not just about, I guess, the material giving. And I think it's a sort of thing we should perhaps ask ourselves is what is really the meaning of this period of year for us? Is it is it really about us getting the most and giving the most materially or is it about other things and how can we think about giving in a really sort of general sense? Well, let's see what everyone said, Matthias, because we asked what three things, including gifts, um, people would like to, um, are most looking forward to giving this festive season. So let's see what you said. Time family, food, love, friendship, friends, Kindle, seeing my children, time with my hubby, clothes, happy people, camera belt, family time, joy, drone, Christmas dinner, children relaxing, Christmas cards, um, my son a fab Christmas. Lots of different ideas there. Very few of them material. Yeah. Do you think there's a bit of a backlash at the moment against this whole idea of, of consumerism? I think so, and, I, and I'm, I'm sort of heartened by um, everyone's responses because they're focusing, I guess, on the essence of what's really important. It's that meaningful time together with loved ones. It's being able to sort of connect, and it's about, I guess, that the joy that comes from that. Um, and I think it's a good thing that there's this backlash about consumerism because where does it stop? And what are the sort of messages we're, we're giving members of the sort of uh, younger generation in terms of what's valued and what's seen as valuable? I've seen some lovely ideas on social media about gifts that, that could be meaningful, that people could, could give, things that people could make, um, you know. And then I saw some today that were like these personalised books, which were really nice, but they're like, oh, this is the perfect gift for people who've got everything. And I was thinking, oh, that'd be really nice. And I thought, actually, this is all just a construct. It's me filling in something with a populated book that's then, you know, generated within minutes that looks quite nice, but actually it, some thought hasn't gone into it. And I keep thinking, I'm really stuck on this because I don't feel very Christmassy at all. I keep thinking, what can I give? How can people make sense of what to give, that, that something that means something to other people or, or, or actually in the act of giving can make you feel better? Well, I think it's sometimes it's a, the process as much as it is the end product. So um, on the weekend, um, two of my goddaughters, they're like four and seven, had made some rocky road and they wrapped that up and they gave that to us. And I think... Um, that was a really nice gift, you know, and there was the love that went with that. Um, and, you know, that's sort of, it's probably the process of making the Rocky Road that's just as important as it was 
for them to be giving it and for us to eat it. Um, so I think there is that the, there's definitely the thought and the intentions behind that. Um, and there's the commercial products that make those um, those albums, but then you can still make those yourself. Um, and in some ways, maybe it's also in combination with that cutting yourself a bit of slack because it will be a bit quicker to, to have it done commercially than it would be to do it as a craft project yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But there is this pressure still that, that, that one has to deliver on the Christmas Day gifts and, and, and a lot going on. I mean, it, it can be quite stressful, can't it, thinking, am I going to perform? You know, we, we're asked to ultimately fulfil a role, aren't we? Give something, receive something, be happy with it, you know, give something appropriate and nice. There's a lot of pressure. What advice would you give people? I mean, you're starting to say be realistic and things, but what, what advice could you give people about the pressure around the giving? I think there are no fixed rules and I think that's a useful thing to bear in mind. So I think what is useful and perhaps the sort of boat has somewhat sailed for this Christmas in terms of if there's a sort of an agreement amongst the family, then that can really help because in your gathering, if there's the expectation that everyone is going to get a gift for everyone else, and that's sort of how it's always been, um, it can be difficult to change that, but it doesn't have, it's not written in cement. So it could be the focus is just on one gift for each of the younger family members. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of giving more gifts to the adults, um, you can give to a charity. Yeah. Um, or if people really find that so difficult, um, it can be selecting one of the family members, um, an adult family member, that will be the focus of the gift from one person. So you do get fewer gifts that way, but I think it sort of um, reduces some of the anxiety. Um, loads of families do this, so it's not like I'm suggesting anything really revolutionary. I think the thing at the back of your mind is there's nothing set in cement about this. We, yeah. we can do it slightly differently. Um, and you know that can help with the pressure and also I guess with the messages that we give um, with, with the giving. It's something I'm going to be talking to um, Paul later about is this whole idea of rules and, and enacting things. But I guess what you're saying, it sort of strikes me that we perform these things and rules can both hinder and also help us. So if we make rules and if we explain what the norms are or maybe reevaluate the usefulness of some of those rules, like buy everyone everything, or you know, it's, it's, people do change those and then that can be a way of, I guess, managing things. So it be interesting to see um, what, what your rules are about your Christmas and, and whether those help you. If any ideas that you've got... Um, in particular, any really thoughtful gift ideas that, that we can potentially steal for us. <laughs> but some ideas would be great to know about. So we'll come to the social media desk in a minute um, and see what you've been talking about there in terms of really thoughtful, meaningful um, gifts that you're both looking forward to giving as well as receiving. But taste what's next. Well, and I couldn't resist one more comment about the gifts. Oh, yeah. Um, I think one of the other challenges is that different ha people have different financial means. So it can be really tricky in, in a family where different family members have quite different sort of um, economies um, and so I guess it's sort of also being upfront with the rules around that so um, you know how that's negotiated it can be a bit tricky but actually by talking it through and having some rules around that I think that can help reduce some of the anxiety because people can't necessarily match other people with with the costs of things um, and I think that can be quite anxiety provoking for people. Yeah no yeah. really really good point really good point and I'm not expecting my puppy to get me anything for Christmas. <laughs> so no new Alfa Romeo in the drive. No. <laughs> the next one is about connecting. And I think connecting for those people that live at a distance from family members might be by Skype or by phone. And so I guess it's us thinking really sort of broadly about how we connect with people because it's not always possible to, to see everyone. And there are lots of people that have got blended families or they've got families spread all over the country or overseas. And so I think sometimes it's about, again, being realistic about what you can achieve in one day. Um, you, you, you know, there will be people that will drive probably the breadth of Britain trying to see different family members yeah. um, all in the same day. Um, and I think that does add some pressure. And it's each person's call, but there can be ways in which we can use technology, I guess, to sort of supplement things um, and not feel like we have to see everyone all on that one magical day. It's that sense of connectedness. And, and we asked you how connected you feel. Um, and people are, are mainly saying that they feel very connected. HJ and Sophie, I'd like to come back. Any ideas on the gifts or, or any ideas on the sense of connection and, and what's meaningful for people, how people are managing to feel connected? 
Yeah, there's lots actually going on in the chat. It's really lovely. Um, just to point out that it is moving quite quickly. Um, so the little pin button in the top right hand corner, if you click on that, that means that you can scroll through easily and you don't get distracted by all the new comments coming through. Um, I saw a really nice one actually, I think it was Julia, um, and she is learning um, a song from Anastasia in Russian for her girlfriend this year. I mean, I absolutely adore that film, it's a really good film, and I think that's absolutely lovely that she's doing something that doesn't necessarily obviously cost anything, but it's, uh, I think it's a really nice gesture. And we've been talking about uh, a lot, uh, what Matejs has been saying, um, uh, sort of sharing our ideas, so we're connecting on here, which is really lovely. Um, uh, we put up there earlier that me and Sophie had a little think, and uh, we talked about in giving, we should give advice for our own experiences, and a lot of that has happened here, which is lovely. And uh, Davin's saying, we are skipping to some of these and go between them, which is good, though. But uh, Davin likes to study MOOCs over the break, so that's how he's going to... Uh, keep learning, which is really good. Uh, people are going to the gym. That seems to be quite popular this time of year, although no, <laughs> keeping it up. Yes. So get home and it's dark. No, I'm going to get into bed. <laughs> so if you guys do keep it up, you deserve a medal for that one. <laughs> much better than we are. <laughs> uh, we've talked about winter walks, which is nice. It's yeah. Yes, it's that time of year. I do like going, you know, layering up and getting out. I think that's mm. sort of the most exercise you'll get to be doing anytime soon. <laughs> Um, and also um, there was another comment um, I'm really sorry I can't remember exactly who mentioned it um, but they have like a diary oh it's Elizabeth uh, a homework diary um, and so she makes sure that she studies little and often um, so that the work doesn't pile up over the Christmas so she puts different pages um, for which page she should read and things like that which I think is a very good idea because it does you do sort of put everything off oh I've got all this time off I'll do it then and it sort of never comes about so i think that's a really good way of making sure that you study every now and then yeah lovely some brilliant ideas and and as usual you guys are all super organized i don't think we need this time management so let's just eat mince pies <laughs> what's what's next on our list of things to talk about Matthias? well it fits with what hj and sophie were saying in terms of learning and i guess for for ou students um it's learning we we associate that with the tmas and keeping up with the virtual learning environment and engaging with our modules but it's also learning really quite generally in terms of what's working for us over the festive period so um someone was saying, well, what they had figured out, um, and it ties in with their formal learning, is that they do little and light, and that's the way in which they manage, and that's helping their wellness. And I think other people will be thinking, right, well, I know that you know I'm best to try and not consume too much alcohol on Christmas Eve because on Christmas Day I get quite hungover and I can't enjoy it as much as I would if I'd cut back on the drinking. That's not based on personal experience. No, I was going to say, I don't think I've ever learnt that, despite knowing it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so it's this sort of learning in the really sort of broadest sense. So what are we actually taking away from this? How are we benefiting from our experience? What are the insights that we have? So that next Christmas, um, we, I guess, sort of learn from that and benefit from our previous experiences. Now, this can be tricky because Christmas happens at one time of year and often you can think, oh, I know that I get really stressed when so-and-so come around or, you know, I, I drink a lot at this time of year. So we can know our triggers. But... It's easier to learn, isn't it, when things are happening often? Because, you know, when things happen once a year, we can get caught up in the, you know, thrust of the cold Christmas festivities and forget some of those things. How can we take advantage of these learnings? Because you're, you're talking more about, you know, these insights into how we behave and what's going to work and be helpful. What advice could you give our students about how they can actually take some of this and remember it for next, next year or, or, or be mindful through the process about what may and not be working? Well, two things sort of leap out. One would be you'd have to be somewhat diligent with this one, and that would be to capture your thoughts in writing because then you're much more likely to be able to, be able to remember them. Um, but the other is, I agree with you, Christmas comes once a year, obviously, but some of the experiences that happen at Christmas are not just unique to the festive season. So some of the things like you mentioned, some sort of challenging dynamics with certain family members, that could crop up any time through the year. And actually, it's almost like you could use Christmas as a practice ground for like, okay, well, I know that this is gonna be a bit tricky, but how will I, how will I try it this time, at this time of year? And it could apply at Easter, or it could apply for the summer holidays or the other, I guess, pressure points in the year. Um, so for those people that are less diligent writing things down, they probably will get a chance to practice some of those skills um, and apply their learning, um, very general learning, um, uh, throughout the year. 
Lovely, excellent. Uh, well, people are still very connected to the idea of food, which is uh, still dominating our world. So if you haven't had a chance to um, enter some of how you feel, um, then please do enter that onto our word cloud. Um, people pop in and out during these sessions. So welcome to, to new people who've, who've been joining us. Um, and it's great to see so many um, students from uh, arts and social sciences as well here um, who've also been joining us more recently. We've been asking people how um, in tune uh, they feel with their immediate environment. And people are saying that they feel very in tune with things. And I don't know whether that's a result of having the chance to sit down and reflect on things or whether, as I say, they're just a very diligent bunch out there, Matthias. Why is it so important to, 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 to be feeling in tune and, and being, I guess, in your body, being active, that sort of thing? I think being aware of your own state helps you sort of anticipate, I guess, some of your emotions and pay and some of your behaviours as well, because if you can already feel like, okay, I'm feeling like I'm on a low ebb, then by identifying that, you can start to sort of address that issue. Or say, for example, you might notice you're getting more anxious or distressed about something, picking that up is the first step towards doing something about it. So, you know, the, the common strategy is then to control your breathing and to slow it right down. But for controlled breathing or relaxation to work, you have to realise that you're in a distressed state um, to begin with. And I think we can learn things from little kids, like because you also said about, I guess, being aware of the environment. Really small children, Christmas is either now or not now. Um, and so we we can all benefit from that, I think. They don't think so much about, um, you know, it's 10 sleeps to go, well, some of them do, but that it's, it's not now or it is now. And then when they're in that moment, I guess we can by recognising their joy, because most kids do find it really joyful, um, it rubs off, off on us and we can sort of see how they are very much in the moment and we benefit from their sort of, I guess, awareness of, of what's happening. And their pleasure in, in so much of this as well. And um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful to see the children at this time of year, the wonder and, and awe of things, you know, the lights coming on. And, and actually, when you do look around you, there is so much to be, to be mindful of and, and thankful for. But being active is the last one we want to talk about, isn't it? Yeah, and, and different people, I guess, will relate to these five different ways of well-being more so than others. Like, this is the one I probably struggle with the most because I'm not really massively into going to the gym or exercising a lot. But it's still one to be really aware of because, um, yeah, if you're going to spend three or four days indoors all sort of together, you sort of get cabin fever in a way. So it is quite useful to do like what Sophie, I think, was suggesting around, you know, wrapping up warm and going for that walk because getting some fresh air and, you know, even a sort of 20 minute walk um, can really sort of help reset um, things and to sort of... Um, help with a little bit of physical exercise because we know that physical exercise helps our mood. Yeah, I mean fundamentally we know that but it's cold and chilly outside and sometimes we can struggle with that motivation to go and do something. You know, I, I often, it's when I notice too late and, and my husband will be like, right, you're out for a run, you know, because, I, you know, you start to feel low and then you realise you've been indoors for a few days and this, that and the other and it can give you such a great sense of perspective but sometimes getting motivated, um, which, which wasn't an issue to be fair, people were really struggling with um, uh, t too much but, but but being motivated to actually go out and do exercise can be hard. Sophie and HJ, what are some of the tips that people have been giving? Because uh, a lot of people have mentioned that they do like going out, they do go for walks, they do go to the gym around this time of year. How do people do it? I think um, one of the themes that is coming out is that people do it like in little bits. They don't push themselves to mm. do something big straight away and sort of build it up and get into habits, which I, I think is really good. Because if I'm faced with something like... This year, I'm going to go to the gym for three hours a day. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but doing little things and building it up, like going for walks. Um, I think Robert said, uh, it might be Robert, that he's uh, brought a new bike to start doing stuff. So that's yeah. really good. Uh, a lot of people are talking about uh, like exercising at home, for example. Mm. You don't necessarily have to go to the gym. Davin's just bought himself a uh, treadmill. So that's just arrived today, so that will help him. But you don't necessarily have to, like you say, you can just go for a walk. It doesn't mean you have to go to the gym or do anything, you know, massively strenuous. Even just a walk is good to clear your head and things like that. So, yeah. You can even do things. I've seen some of these places where you can borrow people's dogs because, you know, going for a walk with a dog is really, I think is a really, really good fun thing to do. Walking with friends and this, that and the other. You can chat and, and enjoy the weather. It's, it's a nice way of getting out and, and doing things maybe a bit different. Brilliant. But Thais, that's nearly all we've got time for today. So what would be your take home message, I guess, in terms of saying, you know, these are five ways we've looked at in terms of mental health. You've said everyone is really different and people will have really different takes on some of these aspects. What would be the one thing that you would wish well for our people watching today? 
I think it, one is probably, you know, be kind to yourself because I think um, we can be tough on ourselves, the expectations that we set. So don't be too rough on yourself. Um, and the other is to, to try and enjoy as much of it as you can. Um, it might not be all entirely joyful um, and we just probably need to accept that there's going to be times when there'll be frustrations and you you know you want to sort of push everyone out the door and say okay enough you can head off now I've had my 30 minutes with you and that's enough um, but you know to, to sort of um, be kind to ourselves and to um, just look out for the joyful bits and perhaps sort of try and uh, not attend too much to the challenging stuff. Brilliant. Mateus thank you very much let's pull a cracker to celebrate. I want a hat. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wear the hat. There's gonna be no hats. Hats going on today. I don't think. Um, I hate these Christmas hats. Uh, can we read the joke out? Why did the golfer use two pairs of trousers? Oh, I don't know. Oh, this is really bad. I'm not sure we will read. It. In case he got a hole in one. We don't even have any sound effects to go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mateus, thank you so much for joining us. That's been some brilliant advice there. Um, and also thank you at home for, for sharing a lot of that advice. Um, you're all super organised and, and it seems like you're all on the right track with things. Um, so we're going to have a little chat with HJ and Sophie. And our next session, we're going to take a focused look at time management and how to tackle some of these issues um, over the festive period. Now, Mateus has put some brilliant resources on the website, so you can take a look at those as well. And those are things from Open Learn. Um, so there's lots and lots of different bits and bobs that you can take a look at if you go to the resources page um, on the Student Hub Live website. Sophie and HJ, I see you've got your lights, Sophie. They're very, very festive. Yes, thank you very much. I do. So what, what, what other things are people talking about right now? How's everyone feeling? Everyone seems to be really cheerful. We've just had a lovely picture. She's put my snowflakes to shame. Um, hopefully we'll get this printed off soon. Uh, it's from Laura and it's it's amazing. I mean, I am quite upset that I didn't <laughs> think of that myself. So hopefully, thank you so much to everyone who has sent us some photos. We have got quite a few and we'll try and get those printed out as soon as possible so that we can pop them on our tree. And we've had some more comments about uh, Matese's session and uh, Sylvia's uh, been very studious and she's doing her TMAs over the break. So um, that's definitely well done for that. And she says she get, gets a lot of great support from her tutor as well. So perhaps she'll nominate her tutor for that award. Yes. So yes, and there's lots of good feedback on the tutor mm. support and the student support teams, which is really nice to have. So that's really lovely. And uh, Stuart's deciding uh, he's going to treat himself uh, this Christmas to a uh, roast fillet of beef. So that's lovely. And we, we did have some uh, more Christmas cracker jokes, but um, they're just too painful to they read are. out. We did notice as well the word or widget, the, the widgets about what people are most looking forward to. Food was the biggest one. I, I, don't, I don't think we can expect any different, to be honest. <laughs> it seems to be a trend. It's finally one time of year I think it's completely socially acceptable to both consume and talk about a large amount of food. And hey, isn't our cake brilliant? This is an Italian um, breakfast bread. Wouldn't that be lovely to have? I think everyone should have that for breakfast on Christmas Day. It looks absolutely magnificent. Um, and of course, all the mulled wine and mince pies and all these yummy, yummy things.